Howdy folks, my name is Wild Bear Bill and I am the Mountain Man of Colorado. Here we are talking about myths and legends from the mountains. Today we are talking about the man, myth, the legend, James P. Beckworth. He's a very influential man working in the American fur trade during the 1800s and one of the most famous pioneers. in Virginia, mother was a slave, he had a wealthy grandpa, learned the blacksmith trade, was a hunter for a mining camp, took a boat to New Orleans, went to the Rocky Mountain, trapped the fever in the stream. James was born James Pearson Beckwith in the year 1798 or 1800 because it is debated. He was born in Frederick County, Virginia, a mulatto presumably born to a slave mother and a white slaver father. His father, Sir Jennings Beckwith, who was the son of Sir Marmaduke Beckwith, third baronet who moved to Virginia to work as a merchant. Sir Jennings had reportedly had 13 children with James's mother. Around the year 1809, Sir Jennings and his family moved to Missouri. Although Jennings recognized his children as his own, he still legally owned them as slaves. Jennings arranged for a blacksmith to apprentice James until the age of 19, where James got in an argument with him and was fired. James was freed by his father by deed of emancipation around the year 1824. In the year of 1824, James joined General William Henry Ashley's Rocky Mountain Fur Company, where he worked as a wrangler. In the picture below, you can see James save Ashley from a buffalo. During his time with the company, he allegedly fought a bear off a boat. Later, around 1825, James was allegedly kidnapped by the Absaroka tribe, or Crow Trap, because they thought that he was the son of a native chief. This was also helped by the fact that James had a lot of a native clothing on. Whether that is true or not, James became a member of the Crow Tribe. For eight or nine years, he lived with the Crow. Allegedly, he rose from a prominent warrior to chief of the Dog Clan. According to himself, he rose to be the most prominent war chief in the nation. During this time, he was a renowned trapper but didn't sell any furs to the Rocky Mountain Fur Company. He instead sold out to John Jacob Astor's American Fur Company. As a worry, he raided plenty of party, mostly Blackfoot, but some whites and other neighboring nations. It is important to note that during his time, he met a brave crow heroine under the name of Pineleaf, who James had fell in love with. According to James, he had a romantic relationship with her, but other sources debate that. It is very likely it will never be known, but I like to believe they both married each other till her death in 1854 and served as companions to each other despite not living with each other. They stayed having a long-distance relationship or as much as you could have one before telephones. But that is just my headcanon. En la plaza de mi pueblo dijo el jornalero al amor En la plaza de mi pueblo dijo from the years of 1838 to 1840, he traded with the Cheyenne, working on the Arkansas River from Fort Vasquez, Colorado. He then moved to the Bent St. Brandon Company, becoming an independent trader. Around this time, it is said that he and some other people started a small outpost that would soon become Pueblo, Colorado. After the Mexican-American War broke out in 1846, he moved back to the United States. song of the Sierras. Let me dream of At the beginning of the California Gold Rush around 1849, he moved to Sonoma, California, but soon moved to Sacramento to live playing cards. 
Around the same time, he gave up playing cards and went back to the mountains, but this time, the Sierras. In 1850, he discovered what is now known as Beckworth Pass, which is the lowest elevation pass through the Sierra Nevada, beginning near Pyramid Lake and the Trucking Meadows, and went along a ridge between the forks of the Feather River before going down into Marysville to the mine that sweet, sweet gold. After the people agreed to pay for the making of the trail, James tried to collect his payment after leading a party down, but the town was suffering from fires, so they couldn't pay. Backworth Memorial is also located at the beginning of Backworth Pass. In the early 1850s, Beckworth started ranching in the Sierras, and this would become the town today known as Beckworth in Plumas County. In the winters of 1844 to 1845, Thomas D. Bonner was listening to Beckworth tell his life stories and wrote them down to be offered as a book to Harper and Brothers in New York. The Life and Times of James P. Beckworth was published in the year of our Lord, 1856. Beckworth reportedly never made money from the book, despite Thomas saying he would. In 1859, Beckworth moved back east to Missouri for a short time before moving to my home in Denver, Colorado. He worked as a storekeeper for Louis Vasquez, but he was appointed as an Indian agent by the U.S. government, and in 1864, he was hired as a scout for the Colorado 3rd Cavalry Regiment, who perpetrated the Sand Creek Massacre, a horrible event. Afterwards, Beckworth tried to return to camping and trapping in the Rocky Mountains, but was made a scout in the Red Clouds War. After the Red Clouds War, he went back to the Crow. At this point in his life, he was very old and frail, still a badass, yet old and affected by disease and other old people problems. In 1866-67, while he was with the Crow, he complained about severe headaches and nosebleeds, probably from overworking himself at such an old age. He returned to the reservation, where in 1867 he died. He was buried at the Lodge of Iron Bull with his adopted forefathers. As we come to this closing chapter in James's life, I would like to say that he and Barchian P, Brave Heroines, Pine Leaf, are now happily ever after together in the happy hunting ground. Have a good day, and I will see you in the next video.